Episode 3, Turning Your Idea Into a Reality. Welcome to the Be Your Own Boss podcast, the young entrepreneur's guide to starting a business. Whether you're thinking about business for the first time or you have an idea that you want to develop, then this is the podcast for you. I'm Mary and I'll be guiding you through this 15-part series that will keep you on track and help you think through the challenges that come with starting a business. Part of the Welsh Government's Business Wales service, Big Ideas Wales raises aspirations and supports young entrepreneurs' ambitions for business. Part funded by the European Regional Development Fund, Big Ideas Wales supports young people through online resources, business skills workshops and one-to-one sessions with an advisor to help your ideas become a reality. To get in touch with us, you can like and follow us on Facebook, Twitter and Instagram. Message us and one of the team will get back to you. Call us via the helpline on 03000 60 3000. Live chat on the Business Wales website. Or you can email us, bigideas at gov.wales. It's time for episode three of the Being Your Own Boss podcast. Now, if you can remember from episode two, we discussed the things you should consider when coming up with your business idea, whether that's filling a gap in the market, using your skills, turning your hobbies and interests into your business, spotting new opportunities or working in an environment that suits you. The possibilities are endless, but now we've come up with the idea, we need to take the next step and turn it into a reality. You might be thinking, what happens next? What should I do? You've probably got a lot more questions than answers right now, and that's fine. To move forward, there are lots of things you'll need to find out and a few decisions to make along the way. I'm getting ahead of myself, though. Let's start at the beginning. Dealing with doubts. It is totally normal to doubt your idea and what it can do at this point. Don't let it hold you back, but don't pretend like they're not there either. This stage in the process is the perfect time to gather information and challenge your ideas until you find the perfect one that you can run with. The planning process is crucial to the success of your business. A business isn't a business until you make your first sale, but that can only happen if you take your time and plan. There are five things you need to be doing right now. 1. Assess the demand for your idea. Talk to your potential customers. Ask them what they want and need. It's important to really listen to them as what they say could change your thinking and the direction of the business. They may even suggest things that you hadn't thought about and should be considering. 2. Improve your skills. You have an idea but you may not have the right skills to take it forward. That's okay, don't see it as an obstacle. There are so many courses you can sign up to from jewellery making and hairdressing to website design and photography. Have a look at what's on offer in your area and get the skills you need. 3. Build your business know-how. Use this time to learn about finance, marketing, the legalities of signing up and all the building blocks to running a business. There are plenty of short courses and workshops to help. Take a look at our websites to find out more. It's a great chance for you to meet other people in the same situation. Don't forget to check out the BOSS tool on the Business Wales website. It's a great way to improve your business skill and knowledge. 4. Get some experience. Go and work for someone else for a few months or you could get a part-time job. A part-time job is a great opportunity to observe how it's done in another business. It may not be in the sector you're interested in, but the basics will be the same. This is a perfect way to learn how a business works, what customers expect, but also what you could improve on when you're doing it for yourself. Not having experience can be a worry for some people, so if you're still in education, why not make your holidays count and get some experience under your belt? 5. Try it out. Start small and test your product in the marketplace to see if the demand is really there. It gives you a chance to gather feedback and work on your business while still in education or working. Always see feedback as a tool you can use and work with. Now it's time for you to start making decisions. You need to think about what kind of business it'll be. You might not know this, but there is more than one way to do it. I'm going to give you a set of questions that might help you think about how you're going to do it yourself. Who are your customers? This decision will all depend on your idea and where you see it going to. 
If you're selling to other businesses, you're in business to business. If you are going to sell to people, you're in business to consumer. Now let's think about your business model. Are you going to sell a product or a service? Will you sell online, face-to-face or via a retail outlet? Are you planning to set up a social enterprise that supports a cause or local community? Do you want to buy a franchise like a branch of pizza chain or gym? Do you want to sell to people directly in their own homes? I know that's a lot of questions and things to think about, but we're not done yet. Now we need to think about the business structures and which might be best for you. You could be a sole trader. This is the structure to go for if you're planning a simple cash-in, cash-out business as a freelancer or one-man band. This is also known as self-employment. What about a limited company? This structure is great if you want to take advantage of better tax breaks, reduce your financial liabilities and or plan to employ staff one day. Or you could go into partnership. This structure is for when more than one of you want to set up a business. Your friend could have a great business idea and you have the business skills to take it forward. Why not go into business together? Combine the idea of one with the skill of the other. Your time at college and the university is great for this, so get talking to people on different courses and see what skills you can bring to the table. You could be a social entrepreneur. This means you want to start a business to bring social change or support your community. A social enterprise reinvests any profits back into the business or community, rather than maximising profits for its shareholders or owners. You can learn a lot more about the legal structures and everything else you need to know on the Social Business Wales website. It's important that you face your fears. Starting your own business can be one of the most exciting experiences of your life. You'll get to watch it grow from just an idea in your head all the way up to your product service being purchased and hopefully enjoyed by your customers. There's nothing like it. So don't be put off by those nagging fears and doubts. You're not the only one who's got them and I bet they go like this. What if I fail? Mistakes are inevitable and starting a business is a real learning experience. If it doesn't work, so what? Listen to advice, learn from it and try again. If you don't give it a proper go, then you'll never know and it'll always just be an idea. Money. You have to do the maths. It's possible to start a business on a budget, so don't worry. I'll explain exactly how to do this in episode 9, so stay tuned. In the meantime, if figures make you nervous, don't forget to take a look at the courses available to you on BOSS through the Business Wales website. Fear of the unknown. This can be both exciting and scary to you all at the same time. You can ensure the excitement pushes back the fear to a minimum by having a clear focus and willingness to adapt when things don't exactly go to plan. It can be lonely at the top. You might be your own boss, but that doesn't mean you need to go it alone. Make sure you can find trusted allies in your advisors, mentors and friends who can support you. Find places where you can work around like-minded people and don't forget to research. Read books and real-life success stories from other entrepreneurs and learn how they did it themselves. By the way, I can let you know there are plenty of these on our website. You might also be thinking, how long does it actually take to turn an idea into a reality? The truth is, it may take years to really get a business off the ground to begin with. But once you have spent years honing your entrepreneurial skills, then it could only take weeks. The Gorgeous Secrets Festival is a perfect example of this. A showcase of North Wales food, drink and artistic talent that was put together by a group of entrepreneurs with a wealth of experience between them. But just like you, at one point, they all started out as beginners. One of Gorgeous's directors, Tansy Rogerson also owns Armadillo Events, which she started in 2014 with a few battles along the way and she had this to say. When you're first starting up, it's the small things that can be frustrating. My business name, web domain and finding the right accountant took months to nail down. I wanted to change the world immediately, but that doesn't happen. 
Fellow director Gavin Matt has been an entrepreneur since childhood and branched out into music in his 20s, creating event companies, community organisations and charities. And when it comes to business setup timescale, he said... What I've discovered over the years is that lead-in times needed to set up ventures reduce as you pick up more entrepreneurial skills. Gorgeous director Jonathan Hughes set up the Great Orm Microbrewery in 2006, but it took him two years to brew his first beer and another three before he could employ staff, but his patience paid off and today the business has grown. There are now seven of us full-time and Great Orm is expanding as a brand across the UK. The lesson? It may take time, it will take persistence, but every step and every experience will stay with you and help you succeed in the future. We have three top tips from the Gorgeous team. Plan ahead. Making a success out of your business takes time, but planning is an integral part of this process. Don't give up. All entrepreneurs agree that lessons learned when they started stayed with them over the years and make them better business people. Work together and get support. Gorgeous was made possible because we found like-minded people to work with. Embrace the support that's available to you. I had a chance to talk to Tansy Rogerson from Armadillo Events about how she turned her idea into the business it is today. Hiya Tansy. Hello. Hi, hi. Now, tell us about your business to start with and a bit about yourself as well. Oh, wonderful. Okay. Well, my name's Tansy, as you just said, and I have my own uh, event management company called Armadillo Events. I set it up four years ago, um, and the reason for setting that up was I wanted to create a portal for, you know, businesses coming into North Wales that needed a a one-stop shop where they could speak to somebody that can sort out itineraries, their events, etc., as well as various other sort of events, product launches, etc. within the region. Um, I had did also quite a few events, you know, across the border and overseas as well. So it's a case of what the clients wanted, I did the best I could to deliver. Did you always have this desire to start your own business? Kind of. It's always been at the back of my mind. And I'm a bit of a late starter. Um, I didn't start my own business till I was 40. And basically, there was just this niggling thing at the back of my mind that I needed to do this. I wanted to have my own business. I wanted to get that experience, see what it was like. Um, I had a passion for, you know, creating really ambitious events, um, as well as supporting other businesses um, with their um, focus and strategies as well. Um, And I'm really glad I did it. I have no regrets whatsoever. It's been an amazing adventure, which I've thoroughly enjoyed. And if I hadn't have done this, I would have met as many people or has worked with as many people as I have. And, you know, you start collaborations with different people, which also um, entailed uh, setting up another company, which we did a music festival, which was award winning for two years. So that was pretty cool. Wow. What music festival was that? That was Gorgeous Music Secret Events. And that was held over in Kyrene um, in North Wales. And the team of us got together, four of us got together, following a conversation um, in a brewery, believe it or not. There's myself and another chap um, who also had a carriage of vision. And from that, we brought in two more directors. And within three months, we'd created our first festival. Wow. Again, the word passion is a running theme. Do you think that that helps to give you the drive you need when running your own business? Yes, it is the one thing that really keeps you going. It's you just have to be focused and just, you know, you really have to want to do this. You can't go in half hearted. You'll, you know, because it isn't easy having your own business. You know, it's all up to you your marketing, your business development, your invoicing, you're an accountant, you're a marketeer, you're a salesperson, you're a delivery person, you're everything. So you've got to be really prepared to roll up your sleeves and it is hard work, but then the rewards are worth it. Are you glad that you waited and had previous uh, experience under your belt before you started your own business? I do. Um, To be fair, with what I do, it was a lot to do with my connections that I'd made over the years that really helped and supported me in setting up my business. And also, you know, with the companies that came forward that wanted their events doing, they knew me already, they knew what I'd done in other businesses, so there was that trust factor there already. So it kind of gives you a head start um, in sort of building your reputation. Even though you're building a brand, people know you and they buy into you as a person at the end of the day. What's the hardest thing about it all? Motivation sometimes. 
I think, you know, some days it could be quite easy to just procrastinate, so to speak. And when it's a nice sunny day, go outside, maybe just put the work aside for a little bit. You know, you can be distracted um, and you can go off on a tangent. So you do have to remain quite self-disciplined, get up in the morning, get yourself in a routine, a routine that you wouldn't normally have if you were in a, a normal full-time job where you go in at nine o'clock, you finish at whatever time you do. In hospitality, you never seem to finish. I know that, so I'm used to hard work. Um, but everyone, you know, you, you, you have to have that um, rigidness with your, your own sort of routine. Any other advice for our listeners who might just be beginning to think about starting their own business? Don't be scared of it. Um, you know, no one prepares you for the different sort of emotions you'll go through as you set up your business. But it's worth it. You'll be so proud of the fact that you created that. That was your passion. It was your idea. You've got no one else sort of ruling over you, etc. Your decisions are your decisions. You have the freedom, um, you know, to... You know, if you want to take time off, you take time off. But when you work hard, you really work hard. Um, and, yeah, there's, there's just so much support out there now. So much more. Over the past four years, it's been building momentum. So just reach out for help. Don't be don't be embarrassed to reach out for help because everyone's there to, to get you off the ground and do what they can. There's such a brilliant support network in Wales for new businesses. So really embrace it and just go for it. What's the worst that can happen? You've made me excited now. <laughs> and I don't even have an idea. <laughs> you can get one. <laughs> Excellent advice. Thank you for your time. Wonderful. No problem. Thank you for having me. That was a lot to think about today and lots of decisions that need to be made. But don't forget to join me in episode four, where we will be discussing market research and what this involves, a very important part on your journey. So be sure to listen in. Don't forget to get in touch with us if you have any questions. To get in touch with us, you can like and follow us on Facebook, Twitter and Instagram. Message us and one of the team will get back to you. Call us via the helpline on 03000 60 3000. Live chat on the Business Wales website. Or send us an email, bigideas at gov.wales. I'll speak to you all again very soon.